If you've ever wanted to put your tracks on top of each other so that you could easily compare their waveforms, Blue Cat Audio's Oscilloscope Multi is the plugin for you. Now why would you want to layer a bunch of waveform displays on top of each other? There's a lot of things that can be done with such a tool. Checking and fixing phase cancellation between tracks is one of the big ones. What's phase cancellation? Well, imagine two coins being dropped into water. When their ripples collide, they cancel each other out. Sound waves act in a similar manner except that they're invisible to us. When a sound wave is met with another sound wave that is going in the opposite direction, so to speak, you get phase cancellation. Phase cancellation is very common with drum recordings. That's because it's the one instrument that is typically mic'd with a half dozen or more microphones. Not time aligning your tracks so that they are phase coherent will result in a lack of frequencies, which is especially noticeable in the low end. Okay, here we have a full mix with the exception of vocals. I've already modified a few things. I've added a oscilloscope multi plugin to every track. And I've also nudged the overhead left and the two tom tracks over to where they need to be. Now, you might not think moving a track a few milliseconds is going to make a big difference, but I'll show you that it indeed will. So, Oscilloscope Multi is already on. This is the snare track. I want to disable, I want to enable the overhead right and the snare display or curves. And then what I want to do is find a hit where it's just the snare drum, if that's in the mix. I already know where that is, so I'm gonna go right to it, which is, it's right here. Ah, first thing I wanna do, I wanna turn off the tempo and, or the click track, and I also wanna solo just the overhead right, and the snare drum. So I just want that one hit on here. And what I want to do is, as soon as I see that hit come up on the display, I'm going to hit the freeze button. It wasn't quick enough. All right, there it is. Now what I do is I'm going to hold the left mouse button and drag and zoom in to this. As you can see, the transients almost match up, but not exactly. And I want to know exactly how much distance there is between this transient and that one. The blue is the snare drum, the green is the overhead mic. So I'm going to zoom in as far as I can and I'm going to put my crosshair at the tip and look up here at the timer, at the time display and I have Zero point six seven one two. So I'm going to put that into my calculator. That is down to the millionth place. That's pretty damn precise. So again, zero point six seven one two. And now I'm going to left click to move. And I'm, I'm just left clicking and then I'm going to find my peak here, which is zero point six seven four three. So I'm going to put that into my calculator. So it's 0 0.6712 minus 0 0.67. Actually, it's, yeah, did I say 4.3 or 1.3? Looks like it's a 4.3. And now I'll hit my equals button, and I have 3.1... Exponent negative three. Uh, sorry, I haven't done math in a while, but uh, basically it's a three millisecond difference with the snare drum being behind the uh, overhead mic. So I'm going to actually, I'm sorry, the overhead mic is behind the snare drum mic. The snare drum comes first in the timeline, therefore it's an early hit. And that makes sense because I believe I read somewhere that a foot is equal to about a millisecond delay a foot from a source so if you think about it the overhead mics are typically I don't know in my studio they're like eight feet 
above the drum set. So the, sn the close mic has almost no delay and, you know, a foot, I would, I would say it's more than three feet away, but you know, that's, that's about right physically. Anyway, that's what I have on here. And if you think about it, oh, the other, the other variable is that a dynamic mic is slower than a condenser mic. So that could make, that could really make up the difference between these two timings. Either way, the time is different and I need to move that snare track back because the overhead is my golden standard for the drum track. So I'm, I'm zooming in with the scroll wheel. I don't really need to do this, but I want to show you what it does when I do this. So I'm going to click the snare track. I'm going to go up to item and I'm going to go to actually, is it? Yeah, it's item nudge set items. And I already have three milliseconds in there, so I'm going to click this button right here, which is nudge right. And as you see, that moves my track. If I hit nudge left, it'll go back to where it was. Nudge right moves my track th to that. And now I'm going to play back my track again from the same point, which is right after the drum fill. Okay, so right there. I'll pull up the oscilloscope multi, just to double check. I'll unfreeze it. And sync. Alright, so there's my snare. And it's dead on now. Well, almost dead on. It's, it's much more on than it was. And if I really, really wanted to get specific, I can move it again over just a tiny bit. And that would make it dead on, but really three milliseconds is, I think, enough. Now let's listen to the difference. I'm going to enable the overhead left microphone. All right, now listen to the low end when I move this back to where it was. I'll undo this, so now it'll be moved back to the fixed position. It gives it more smack. It doesn't sound like a thin snare drum anymore. It's still thin sounding just because the snare drum itself was tuned very tightly, but it has more of a low end impact than when it wasn't moved. So let's check it out one more time before actually this wasn't that wasn't before I'll move it back into position now so this is before and then I'll just go back to nudge And here's after. All right, another usage that I like is to see, you know, if the rhythm section is doing their job. A lot of times when I'm mixing tracks for, you know, new bands or just people that don't know how to play their instrument, no offense, but that's the truth, you have to fix bass guitar a lot of times. If you've been mixing long enough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So what I like to do with this is for the bass guitar, uh, first thing I want to do is make sure that I have just what I want to see. So I'm going to enable, so I'm going to enable the kick drum, the bass guitar, and the snare drum. And then I'm also going to add a click track to this mix. So I just control T to insert a track and I believe it's under insert. Yep. Insert click source. Now it's important that your tempo is accurate. I believe mine is. Now I need to add oscilloscope multi to the click track. I'll call this click and add my effect. I'll call it click under here. Choose a color. 
Oh, one tip. When choosing different colors, you want to make sure that you don't choose a very similar color to something that you're going to compare. Like, for example, you'll see Guitar Close. Let me make this bigger. Guitar Close is not green or it's not orange. You know, Guitar Close is yellow. So the the Guitar Ambient mic, I don't want that to be green or orange. I made it purple. So purple versus yellow is a good compliment. And then you can look at a color wheel and look at the colors on the opposite sides of the color wheel, which I have on screen right now, are complementary colors. They work well together. Another thing I like to do when I'm doing color design or graphic design is look at the NFL colors or the NBA colors. Their uniforms have very nice color complementary looks to them. And under this plugin, you can do that. There's no white setting, but basically a dark versus a light if you're going to compare the two tracks. So, all right, so I have, I'm under the click track. Actually, I want to be under the bass guitar so I can enable the click. Oh, did I not name it? Maybe I didn't name it. Oh, it's it's under there, but under seven. I guess I just didn't see that. All right. So I'll make this bigger. All right, now it's enabled. Now, I could disable the other things, but I don't want to. What I want to see is, are my bass notes lining up with the click, the kick, and the snare? That's usually the three things that if the bass drum is, or the, if the bass guitar is off of, it'll mess the whole track up. So what I want to do is, since I've added a new instance of this, I want to hit play. I, first of all, I want to unfreeze it. And when I hit play, I'm going to hit the synchronize instances button to sync everything up. Okay, so obviously the orange is the bass note and the teal is the click and the snare. I'll disable the click right now. And what I'm looking for is the beginning of the bass note. Is it really matched up with the beginning of the the snare and the kick? And it's not exactly matched up. And really, to be honest with you, that doesn't matter. What matters is what I'm hearing. What I want to stress is meters should not be number one, they should be secondary to what we hear. So if we hear a problem with the bass guitar clashing with the drums, we really want to know what the actual problem is. Is the bass guitar playing on click or are the drums off? And this will make things much easier, much more objective, nobody whining about, oh, I'm the one playing on rhythm. We can see for sure who really was playing to the click or, you know, who was off, who was on, who was early, who wasn't. And um, that's it, really. And it really helps with aligning bass tracks, which is typically a problem, and drum tracks as well. We can shift those a little bit and make things better. Now, again, I am of the mind of plugins like... Um, actually, it's not really a plugin. It's more of a program within Pro Tools, but it's called Beat Detective. Do not beat detective the hell out of your drums, especially live drums. Well, live drums really are the ones that shouldn't be messed with too much because 
Look, you want perfect drums? Use a goddamn machine. People who overbeat detective drums, oh, it just sounds bad and... You know, you're not doing it right if you're just doing the entire track. So if it's noticeable, if you're too dead on to the click, it just sounds fake. Another obvious use of oscilloscope multi is to check mono compatibility for your entire mix. Now let's check this out. There's another view called XY view. This is the main view and now XY view is this. I'm going to make this the big window and change this to compare my mix left and mix right. Oops. Turn my click track off. I can tell you right now, the way this works is if you're seeing a lot of that, these are actually dots when you zoom in, you can see them better. If those dots were to be in the upper left and bottom right quadrant, that means that mono compatibility is bad. However, if they're in the upper right and bottom left quadrant, like they are right now, Mono compatibility is good. Now, you may already have this in a plugin, whether it be free or otherwise. What I love about this particular plugin is okay, I have mono compatibility problems. What the heck can I do about that? Well, immediately you can just go through and say, okay, my overhead mic and my, uh, my snare mic, how do they look? Looks pretty good to me. I look at my Tom mic. So we got an equal stereo spread. It's not exactly mono compatible, but again, let's look at the mix. I mean, that's really as mono compatible as you're going to get. Now, if I, I was doing a real mix, that might not be exactly going, you know, upper left to upper or bottom left to upper right. But this will give you a good idea of, you know, how much stereo you have going on as well. Typically, what I like to see is a nice little circle. But if you have good mono compatibility, then that's great. The final usage that I can think of for this plugin is to test plugin delay compensation, whether or not it's working. Now, I have this already set up. This is click track number two. It exactly matches the first click track. As you can see, I'm gonna line, I'm gonna zoom in. This will show you. It's an exact match. However, this track has the linear phase from T-Rex, from IK Multimedia on because it has a huge delay compensation. Down here you can see that it's delayed a significant amount. What I want to know is, is this plugin giving me what it says it is? Is it delaying properly? There's a lot of plugins out there that don't properly compensate for delay processing or processing delay I should say and the way you test that is I set up a 
oscilloscope instance, also oscilloscope multi instance before and after the plugin that I want to test. And I've named that click track delay and I have it open over here on the mix. As you can see, we have click, which is this track. And we have click delay and click delay too. I have these soloed and now I'm going to play them and unfreeze this. All right, so what do we see here? We have the purple, which is prior to the um, linear phase plugin. And then we have the after. Now you can't see it because they're overlapping. I'll turn this off. Now look, this is the click track without any plugin. Again, click. And then click delay two. They're right on top of each other. That means that the plugin delay is set properly. We shouldn't have to worry about that plugin. If it wasn't properly delaying. Now I'm using the click track as a reference because it's a quick little transient. I know that it's going to show me properly how it should look. And I can easily generate it and easily see exactly if it's off or not. And obviously, as you can see, it matches these two tracks. You know, if I were to turn plug-in delay compensation off, I do believe that this would not match. Now let me try that. Under Reaper, you can go, uh, I'm in the plugin, you can go over here to where it says two in, two out, and then, um, I'm sorry, I gotta right click it, and then see it says PDC, that's plug-in delay compensation. I will disable that. Now down here you'll see it's now at zero out of 20,400 or 20,000 or 2,048 samples. Now if my theory is correct, this should mess this up. You can hear it. You don't even need this plugin to show you that. You can hear that it's giving a an issue. Again, if your plugin, no, oh, I forgot to mention. To test this properly, you need to not have any sound modification going on. Now, under this plugin, when all the dials are set to 0 decibels, it's good. Now I could also bypass this. Let me add PDC back on. Now again, that goes back to where that is. It's bypassed now. And now when I go over here, it should be matching. Yep. Okay, so yeah, again, now you got to make sure you're watching the delay compensation when you hit bypass. It should stay the same, otherwise this won't work, but some plugins just by being on will add some kind of coloring to your audio, but most of them have a bypass button that you should hit, and then that'll enable you to check to see that your tracks are delaying properly or not. I guess you could do this with another source, but a click track seems to be the way that I figured out how to do this. And I recommend that you go through all your plugins that you typically use and test them. I'm going to do this myself now that I have the oscilloscope plugin to make sure that my plugins are delaying properly. Some of them might not be, and that's that could be an issue with timing. So... I like this plugin. It runs for about 50 bucks last time I checked. It could be less, it could be more by the time you see this video. It could be less if you buy it from a dealer or more if you buy it from a dealer. Either way, I think it's a useful tool. It's a pretty good price. 
and it's available on all kinds of formats. I believe it's on AAX, RTS, VST, and the AU format. I know it's 64-bit with a couple of those, and you know they're really, really good. Blue Cat is really, really good about giving you tons and tons of options when it comes to formats and operating systems. So this plugin gets a thumbs up from me, and I recommend downloading it. Is it necessary? That all depends on your situation. You may not want this plugin. You may want to save some money. But I tell you what, when it comes to working out phase issues, this is a great plugin to use. I didn't even get down to this control. You can actually delay displaying your um, waveform so that you can you know, run things a little bit quicker instead of measure, you know, zooming in and measuring to me, that's quicker, but you can just delay this. Now, what some of, some of the things I wish they would add is I can't just double click on this number right here and change this to like one millisecond or 1.3 milliseconds. I have to drag the slider, which I think I can hold shift and it's more precise or alt. Alt just takes it back to zero. Uh, oh, there we go. I double clicked the slider. <laughs> okay. Never mind then. Um, so now I can type in what I want. But what I really want them to do when I have this frozen, I'd like to be able to delay the waveform in real time when it's frozen. That would be a cool little feature they could add. And then I can really see you know, how much the waveform needs to be compensated for. Very, very cool tool. Again, you may not need it. I think I'm going to use it, especially when I'm trying to get drums to sound as good as possible. And you should too. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.